Before you start dating, you need to know what is your goal? What do you want? Don't date and then see what happens or you're going to attract a man who's a see what happens kind of man. And that's going to be the kind of man that's going to waste your time and he's going to break your heart. So you need to date with the intention for marriage. If you are dating because you are lonely and because you're trying to look for somebody to fill that spot, then I'm just letting you know you're going to set yourself up for heartbreak. That's not going to happen. If you're dating because you just are looking for a companion, then ma'am, you are selling yourself short. That's like walking in a restaurant and saying that you're starving. However, you just want a piece of ice. You order the five course meal, you pay $300 because you at a Michelin star restaurant, but the only thing you eat is a piece of ice. <laughs> that's all you, that's all you eat after paying all that money. It's a waste, ma'am. It's a disservice to you. I'm also not here for you to think that I'm going to bash men. So let me make this really clear. Because I understand that there's a lot of people that gain a whole lot of popularity about bashing men and saying all men are bad. All men are about controlling women and slaving women. And it's all for the man's benefit and all this all, all the other stuff that's floating around, which is a hot ass mess. And it's to your disadvantage to believe that. OK, I am anti build a bears. I am anti any man that hurts women, period, point blank. I will always be against any type of man that doesn't know how to treat a woman, that doesn't know how to respect a woman, that doesn't know how to love a woman. However, it would say in that I am pro good men. I am pro masculine men who are in their masculine energy and who know how to pour into a woman, who knows how to treat a woman, who knows how to pursue a woman, who knows how to earn your heart and is willing and wants to do that because he is in his masculine energy. And that's the kind of men that I teach you on how to not only to attract, but where this man is hooked on you and madly in love with you for life. So when you're being intentional with dating, your intention is to attract what kind of man? Do you want to attract a man who's in his masculine energy? Or do you want to attract a man who's in his feminine energy? Let me tell you what the difference is. This is what I found when I did my dating experiment of going on a, over 100 dates. There are two types of men. There's men who are feminized men and then men who are in their masculine energy. Now, with that being said, for all the new people who don't really know me, feminine energy is not weakness. It's not a bad thing, okay? Feminine energy for a woman is your power. You want to activate that feminine energy and we'll talk more about that later. However, if you saw a cat barking, would you not ask questions? If you saw a barking cat, then would you not be confused? Would you not say, you know what, wait a minute, something here is not operating correctly. Everything in the universe vibrates to a certain frequency. And if this man claims that he is straight and wants a woman and he's operating in his feminine energy, then ma'am, he is going to do a disservice in your life. He is going to drain you because feminine energy receives. Feminine energy has to be poured into. Think of yourself as the garden. A garden, you have to water it first. You gotta plant the seed into the garden first. Plant the seed. It is the seed being planted into the garden. You gotta water it. The garden is the garden regardless. Now, once you plant the seed in it, once you water it, once you provide the nutrients, once you allow the sun to shine in the garden, after time of nurturing that garden, then it grows, ma'am. You are the garden. Now, if you have a man that says, well, I'm the garden too, okay? I'm the prize. I'm the garden too. I want flowers too. I want my nails done too. I want to be pretty too. I want you to take me on a date too. How does that work, okay? How does that, do you see gardens standing up and nurturing other gardens? I just need, I just want us to go in the common sense corner and make it make sense because we need to go back to order because everybody's freaking confused. And what that's leading to, ladies, is leading to love, dating, and relationships working to your disadvantage because you're allowing certain foolishness to occur that is not in your best interest. All because 
the weak ones, the lazy ones, the ones who aren't willing to hold themselves accountable to do better, to be better and get better, don't want to step up. So you got to be clear that you want a man who's in his masculine energy because a man who's in his masculine energy, he gladly wants to give. Masculine energy is the giving, doing energy. It is the being energy. Masculine energy serves. Masculine energy is the hunter. He enjoys the thrill. It delights him. That's why they like basketball and football and sports. The idea of possibly not winning is the thrill. If they could just get whatever they want and because they want it, then that's boring for a masculine man. So he enjoys the process of earning you, of providing for you, of protecting you. He enjoys that process. So if you have a man that comes along who says, what do you bring to the table, okay? We need to go 50-50. If he's coming to you and he's saying these things like the phone works both ways, then you already understand that you don't have a masculine man on your hands. You don't have a man in your space who can add value to your world. A man should be able to afford you. And he must first be able to afford you intentionally by understand by understanding his role as a masculine man. If he doesn't understand that role, then he's gonna take from you more than he can add from you. So you gotta be intentional about what type of man that you want. If you want a masculine man, then ma'am, you have to date accordingly. First, you gotta understand that if you wanna attract this masculine kind of man, then you gotta increase your feminine energy. Oftentimes, because of the way society is, because of the way things are now, women have been forced, encouraged, lied to, you, that in order for you to be successful, in order for you to get what you want, then you gotta date like a man, you gotta act like a man, you gotta think like a man, you gotta work like a man. And all that's left us is by ourselves and worn out and tired and still making less money and having to do more work. Did somebody do the math on that? Think about it. We gotta work. We gotta still come home and clean the house, cook, take care of the kids. And these men want sex. They want a woman that's gonna encourage them. They want a woman that's gonna support them. And he wants you to pay 50-50 on the date. <laughs> and he wants to have you prove yourself to him the litigated audacity when the statistics and the science shows that when a man has a good wife he actually is more motivated he makes more money he's healthier he lives longer and he has a better peace of mind and you are allowing his genetic line his offspring to be on this planet to move on you provide way more value. So how does that make sense to you? How is that adding up? And you risking your life and your body and your shape to provide him children and you're paying for dates? It makes no daggone sense at all. The math isn't mathing. As my husband calls it, it's pirate math, okay? It's one for you, one, two for me. Two for you, one, two, three, four for me. It's no man. At some point, you have to understand what your value is and add tax and don't settle for anything less than what your value is when you are calling forth who you want to be in your world because calling forth or settling for the wrong man can cost you everything. So how do you make it work for you? How do you attract the kind of man who's gonna wanna pour into you, who's gonna wanna see your value, who's gonna wanna long-term make your life easier for you? Because ma'am, he shouldn't be able to be in your space if he can't afford you. If he can't afford you mentally, if he can't afford you emotionally, if he can't afford you spiritually, if he can't afford you financially, then what is he doing there, ma'am? You can get penile for free. The plastic ones probably will make you happier anyway, ma'am. They will probably last longer. You probably will be much less disappointed. So what is he doing there? I have seen so many women settle for men who have nothing to bring to the table. What On one of them own shows, I saw this one guy who's uncute. And oftentimes, ladies, let's just go in the common sense corner, okay? Because it'd it be the most beautiful women who are very successful. Where am I type A, very successful? I got it going on. I got my own house, my own car, and everything else. Who here, boss lady and all that. The ones that you already in a higher tax bracket. You already made a life for yourself. 
You technically don't need a man to eat. It's not like you need a man in order for you to have a roof over your head. You're not, you're not, that's not what you're looking for. You're good. Drop what it is that you do so you can remember who you are. Because it always ends up being the women who have it most put together settling for the biggest Build-A-Bears, okay? He barely got teeth in his mouth. He's over here with a pot belly. You don't want much, okay? Money don't matter. I'm not asking for much. I just want me a good man. I just need a man that's gonna pay attention to me. I just need a man who's gonna be honest. I just need a man that's gonna love me right. However, you don't understand that that broke man can't love you right. You don't understand that that simple man is going to be insecure compared to what it is that you're doing. You don't understand that after you have to pay the bills and carry the majority of the load, that you're gonna start to resent this man. You're gonna start to lose respect for this man. You got a neurotech. And then here he is trying to date your neurotech self. And he got a pot belly, don't have any hair, okay? He's five foot two. He, he lives with his mother. He makes about 100,000 less than you make. And he can barely pay his own bills. And with his uncute self, he's talking about how you need to tolerate his bad behavior. Can somebody make the math math, please? Because it seems like the most successful women, the type A women, tend to settle for these type of men. Have y'all not noticed that? Have you not noticed that it tends to be the women that are the most successful that settles for that man who won't commit to her, who isn't faithful, who isn't a provider. He might be willing to make you have babies and he's giving you babies so he can lock you down while he's free to go do whatever it is that he wants to do. Can somebody make it make sense? Ladies, this goes back to you understanding what your value is and raising your standards. And I'm gonna tell you why you do this. It's based on your love archetype, ma'am. Every woman who wants love and hasn't been able to attract her romantic best friend has love blocks. A love block is any thought, behavior, belief, or energetic block that is trapped in your body, keeping you from the love that you want. And for a lot of type A, make it happen type women, their actual drive is oftentimes based in trauma. When you find yourself successful and you're constantly choosing men who are not at your level, when you're constantly choosing men who are married and who are emotionally unavailable, when you're constantly choosing men who can't see your value, then that's because you have love blocks. And the same thing that has benefited you in your career is hurting you in your personal life because your drive to be successful is based in trauma. It's based in not being seen, not being valued, not being protected when you were a child. So then you're like, you're gonna see me one way or another. I'm gonna be the best. Mommy who's overcritical gonna see that I'm gonna be the best and mommy's still criticizing and you're still trying to earn her approval. Daddy who couldn't give you the attention, who couldn't give you the, the love, who couldn't give you the affection, you are still trying to prove your value, that you are just as good as anybody else. You're just as good as the other kids he chose to be a daddy to when he walked away. I know I'm flying too close to the sun here, but so based on that, you keep choosing the man who reflects the insecurity that drove you in the first place to become successful. And you choose beneath you because you are afraid if you actually choose at your level or higher, if that man rejects you, it's a reflection of something wrong with you. It's not a problem when a ragamuffin rejects you because to you, you can be like, well, I didn't really want him. I didn't really try. But for a man that's at your level or higher to reject you, if you have been rejected, you never want it to happen again, especially for the Ruby archetypes especially for a Ruby. Oftentimes when a Ruby has been rejected in college or rejected younger, then she shuts down even the possibility of truly be re being rejected again. So if she lowers her standards, then she can be like, eh, I didn't really try. It's not that big of a deal. Does that make sense?